Welcome to another episode of the Root of Everything podcast. And I want y'all to remember when it comes to all these episodes, they're all working together. So every single episode works on the last one that we just posted. So in this one, we just talked about the infinity decimal and how things could be super small. And infinity goes all the way to the smallest decimal, but infinity also goes to the biggest decimal. That same concept goes with things and their possibility. Things can be impossible and possible at the same time. It all depends on how you look at it. And what we're, all, and what we're also going to cover today is should you be shooting for the things that may be quote unquote impossible? Friends turn enemies, lovers turned into flings. As I grow older, I'm cutting off these loose strings and moving on to better things, hoping it'll better me. Some things you just know, and some things I never seen. Some peasants will get crowned, some kings won't ever be. Evidently, I'ma shine inevitably. It ain't a young out that's better than me. And when they say they go hard, I laugh hysterically. Uh. The message for today is everything is either possible or impossible. And it all depends on how you look at it. There's no ends or buts about it. Something can be possible for you and something can also be impossible for you depending on how you look at the situation. And there's two ways to look at possibility. There's a simple-minded way to look at possibility and there's the infinite-minded way to look at possibility. The simple-minded way when it comes to possibility looks at things for what they are on a regular sense in a simple-minded way. They look at maybe the time period we're in or maybe the chances are by other statistical reasons. They look at things that are reasonable. It's, it's nothing wrong with, le- with, there's nothing wrong with thinking like this. But then the other way to look at it, the infinite-minded way, it adjusts itself to certain circumstances. It adjusts itself to passion. It understands that if somebody possesses passion in this and this possibility, then whatever we know in the simple-minded way goes out of the window. It doesn't matter because we understand when that passion is involved in that equation, then it becomes possible. On average, the simple-minded mindset is right. The stats come in, the chances come in, the little probabilities that they run, that is usually right. But the infinite-minded mindset calculates also the things that are infinite. It calculates the passion that can be put into something that will change the whole equation. And my goal is to change what the average is. I want people to think in the infinite-minded mindset because then if people can believe that impossibles are possible, then more impossibles will become possible because simply everything in the world was once impossible. Everything that we ever seen in our lives that we do on a daily basis was was once named impossible, but somebody decided to think differently. Somebody decided to think in the infinite-minded mindset and to understand that if they possessed a passion for something, that it then can become possible. To give you all an example of when these two mindsets go head in hand is if you ever turn on the TV and you watch ESPN's first take and Stephen A and Max go head to head. And if you ever watch them, you understand that Stephen A has his opinions and Max has his opinions. They're never the same. But the difference in their styles and their opinions is usually when it comes to these mindsets. Max is always talking about the stats, some wild metric that he uses to show this player is better than this player. But Stephen A is always saying, no, I'm telling you, I just know the eye test and I know he is better than him. And you can have these tense arguments because Max is like, no, I have the proof right here. But then Stephen A is always, no, trust me, I know because I'm I'm passionate about basketball. I know what I'm talking about. Max, you don't know what you're talking about because you don't live in basketball. This is what I do. And so what Max is saying is that he has the simple-minded mindset and there's nothing wrong with it. And most times he's going to be right in most scenarios. But Stephen A also understands in certain scenarios, there's some things he can see that he can't see because he looks beyond just the stats. He looks beyond just a simple-minded way to look at something that's going on. He understands that these players possess something that can't be put on a stat sheet. And that's why he's so valuable in these discussions. And that's why other people need to understand that this mindset needs to be used more often. Now, I'm not saying that stats and possibilities that you can account for aren't useful. But what I'm saying is that way of thinking doesn't account for the things that can change the whole equation. You can't account for passion. You can't account, you can't account for something that's going to change the whole way we look at things. So if you get anything out of this whole little segment, it's that if you want to do the impossible, you must first believe that impossibles are possible. Your dreams need to seem impossible. I'll say it again, your dreams need to seem impossible. And I believe that because I think all of us have infinite potential. 
And if you don't shoot for impossible, if you don't shoot for what seems like it could never happen, then you're limiting your infinite potential. I'll say it one more time in a clearer way. If you have infinite potential and you shoot for something that's not infinite, then you are limiting what you can be. Now, a lot of you might be like, Jamar, I'm scared to do something that bold. I'm scared to put all my chips into something that's impossible. But I'm here to tell you that there's something even scarier than that. And it's scary to not know if you're impossible as possible. It's scary to know that you had something that could possibly be the most happiest thing in your life, something that could unlock all the potential you could ever have and everything you could ever want in life. And you just said, nah, I don't think it's possible. You said, ah, I'm scared to do it. So, But you're going to be even more scared throughout your whole life knowing that you had something that could possibly change everything you do in your life. So what I want to tell y'all is I am more scared to not know. And I'd rather fail. I'd rather try something that I think that could possibly be the best thing I could ever have. I'd rather try that and fail and know, okay, that wasn't it. Or know, okay, now I failed and I can do it differently. But just sitting there and not trying, sitting there and saying, "Mm, I'm scared to do it, is only going to make more scariness in your life. And I just don't want y'all to do that. And so what I also want y'all to do is not to settle and to not get too comfortable in what might be seeming like a good goal. Something that's like, okay, I can hit that, but not doing the goal that's like, that's the one I want, but yo, I'm scared to do that one. I'm scared to do that one because, oh my goodness, I probably don't have the capabilities. It's probably not possible. You're probably thinking in that simple-minded mindset when you're like, okay... I'm looking at the statistics. It's probably not possible, especially for a guy like me who's done this in the past. I'm telling you to botch that. I'm telling you to get uncomfortable and go with the one that's going to be impossible by most people in their eyes. And if it's not impossible in other people's eyes, if it's not impossible by most people and they're saying, oh, yeah, that's possible, shoot higher. And if you don't think it's impossible, sometimes you should probably shoot higher. Literally 10 seconds I was recording this video. I was like, I can't do it. I'm not feeling it. But, But at the end of the day, I know I love doing this and I know that. This is my impossible. This is the thing that I know is going to fulfill everything I want. And so I got uncomfortable about 10 seconds ago, probably longer. I've been talking longer than that. But I got uncomfortable and said, no, I'm going to continue to try this. And I'm going to know if I'm going to fail on this. And I'm going to know if I'm not supposed to do this. But I know I'm supposed to do this because I'm I'm continuing to talk right now. So I want y'all to continue to take that step. Continue to get uncomfortable with taking the one that has the chances of being everything you ever wanted. My senior year in high school, I took a math class. I took a math class. I had already got accepted to Temple University and some other schools. I knew I was good. All I had to do was pass. I was in the easiest math class possible. I had like 105 in there. Literally easy. My best friends were in that class. It was simple. And my dad told me, Jamar, why don't you do the AP class? Why don't you do the AP class? You're, you're cruising in there. And I was like, no, nah, I'm trying to cruise this senior year. I'm trying to chill. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And then I thought about it. And I was like, I'm going to college. I'm going to be challenged in college. I'm going to be going through these harder professors. I need to go and do the pre-AP class. And the class that was pre-AP with the teacher, everybody said, that's the hardest teacher in class. Don't do it. Stick with this one. It's literally either the hardest teacher in the school or the easiest teacher in the school. And I thought about it. And then the same thing I had about 10 seconds ago, I don't know why I keep saying 10 seconds ago, but a couple minutes ago when I was like, man, I can't, I can't do this segment. I made the decision to get uncomfortable. I made the decision to do something that I knew could have the most benefit in my life. And I decided to take the pre-AP class. I I decided to do something that probably was going to be harder, that was probably going to make things worse on my senior year than I wanted it to be. And I went into the class and hated it for the first probably like 90% of it. And I was like, dang it, I'm taking hard classes. I'm doing all this. I'm not trying to be doing all this. But when I came out of it, I still hated it. But then when I got to college and I was taking harder classes and I came back to my school for high school that next semester, I told my teacher, I'm so happy I took your class because it allowed me to grow. And what I want y'all to do is to give yourself the chance to grow and not limit your potential. You see, by me taking that other class, I was limiting my potential. I was limiting the amount of work I could learn. I said work I could learn. I was limiting the amount of math I can learn. Not that I really wanted to learn math. But I grew as a person to be able to go through different problems in my life by taking that harder class. So if we take the easy the easy goal with the class that's easy, if we take the easy class, the easy goal, the the one we know we can attain, then we're not going to grow. And what is that doing? That's limiting our potential. But if we take the one that's the hardest, the one that we know that's going to give us the most room to grow, that's going to be the one that shoots our potential way over the roof. But that's just a simple a simple example. If we can take the goals that's going to be very impossible, the goals that are like, yo, that's not going to happen. That class I took, that was very possible. If we can do something that's even more scarier, something that's going to be like, that's never been seen before, 
that's going to get your infinite potential. Understand infinite potential, not just high potential. No, infinite potential. So you have to do something that's basically infinite. And that's by doing something that's very uncomfortable. And I really want y'all to go and and do that and understand that if you don't do it, then you're never going to know. But first, what you have to do by knowing that you're doing something that's impossible, you have to believe that your impossible is possible. You possess something so special, and I mean so special, and you have to have faith in that. But if you don't have faith in what makes you special, then you're no longer special. But that belief that you have is what unlocks everything. It's not about all the particular things you do in things. It's all about the simple belief. And if you have the belief that you're special, if you have the belief that you can find your passion, then that passion and that specialty will actually be special. And it will get you through every obstacle that comes through. It will get you through everything when it seems like it's impossible. It will get you through all those things. But if you don't first believe that those things that are impossible are those things that are special, then it will no longer be special because you don't believe in it. And you have to be able to believe in it so hard that you can seem crazy at times. You can seem like, man, I don't know what he talking about. I don't know what kind of proof he has that that stuff's going to be there. But the only proof that you need to make something impossible possible is belief. And it should be so hard. It should be so much belief in that that nobody can sweat you. Some people be asking me, Jamal, what you think Root of Everything is going to do? What do you think this little podcast you're doing is going to amount to? And I'm like, it's going to blow up. It's going to be the biggest thing. It's going to change the world. And, you know, it may be like, man, you know, the possibilities, you know, probably uh, you should probably look this way. No, I believe in what I'm doing and I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't believing in what I was doing. But I believe that. And so therefore it's going to happen. You see, Allen Iverson, when he was a kid, about 10 years old, used to tell everybody, yo, I'm going to be able to take MJ. I'm going to take MJ and watch it happen. What happens when MJ, not MJ, gets to the league? What happens when Allen Iverson gets to the league? He crosses over Michael Jordan. It's famous. Go on YouTube right now. Look at Allen Iverson cross over Michael Jordan. He said it was going to happen. He believed it was going to happen. And then it happened. But that's what y'all have to do with your goals. You have to shoot high. We go, let me go over the whole episode today. You have to first realize that things that are impossible are actually possible. You have to understand that if you want to achieve the impossible, you have to first shoot for impossible. And if you don't shoot for impossible, you're limiting yourself. And then once you figure out what your impossible is that you want to shoot for, you have to believe that you can reach that impossible. And I know that can seem uncomfortable to most people. And it's uncomfortable It's it's uncomfortable to me. But what I want y'all to know is you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that's what we're going over next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Root of Everything podcast. If you enjoyed any moment, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and rate us. And then if you want to stay up to date, follow us on our other platforms and go to our website, rootofeverything.com. And tune in to our weekly newsletter called The Weekly Root.